Hello everyone and welcome to my demo. So today I'm going to be talking about how you can connect a DynamoDB database to a Lambda, to the API gateway, and then contact that API through Postman. So we've started off and I've got a DynamoDB database which I've named Message Table. Uh, we've got a few previous messages in here from where I've been playing with it, but otherwise it's just a fresh new table. Uh, I've set the primary key to be message ID. So my first step after that was to create a Lambda, which I've named message table backend. Now I started from a bit of an advantage here. What I did was I used a blueprint. I used the simple mobile backend blueprint, which as you can see, it says it's good for reading and writing to DynamoDB, which it, it pretty much was. So let's check out my Lambda. The code of the Lambda is, Lambda is pretty simple. Uh, here we can see at the top, we bring in the DynamoDB document client, which is how we're going to be contacting DynamoDB. And then in the handler, which is key to all landers, we take in an event, which we'll be using in the API gateway later. Uh, beneath that, we've got this function to generate a UUID, which I've nicked from the internet. Uh, and the first thing we read from our event is the operations. This is what we're going to be doing to the database. Uh, you can see down in this switch statement that we can set the operation to be create, read, update, and so on. Beneath that, we set the message ID. If I've not specified it in the event, because it's an optional thing you can pass in, uh, we then use the UUID generator. Uh, and beneath this, we then build a payload object. The payload object is specified in the document client documentation. Uh, depending on the method you're using, it'll need table name to say which table it's connecting to. It may need a key to reference a specific, specific item in the database, and it may need details of the item that you're modifying or adding. So here we've got message ID, which is the primary key, uh, and we've got message, which is the only other field of the message. So my database just stores messages with their ID. Um, one other thing to note in here is that I'm using process.end.table name. So just in case the name of my database were to change, I've stored table name as an environment variable. As you can see, message table corresponds with the name of the table in DynamoDB. I'm assuming if this table existed outside of my um, AWS account, I would need to provide a different specifier to it. But as it is, I can just use the name of the table. So this is the Lambda. What's beautiful about Lambda is that you can use many different test cases. So I've configured these test events that pass in the event object. So as you can see, I've got a test list, which passes in the operation list. I've got test create message, which tests creating of a message. I've got test delete message as well. Um, so we're going to run a couple of these now. So let's test create message with set ID, which is going to create a message with ID of one. Bam. And if we test list, uh, we can see that a uh, message with the ID of one has been added. If we go back to our database, bam, message ID of one has been created. Now we can test delete, which will delete the message of one. If we test list again, we see that the message with the ID of one is gone. I really love these. It made it super easy to make sure that the Lambda itself was working. So I know the database and the Lambda are set. The next step was to add the API gateway. Now, um, I imagine you can manually wire these things in, but I found it super easy to add a trigger for the API gateway and then create an API from that. As it is, I've now created an API, so we're gonna go and check that out now. So over an API gateway, uh, we've got my API that I've created. So here's the endpoint, uh, message table backend, and I've got two methods and one method I've not set up just to show you how easy it is to set up a, a method. So when you're setting up a new method, you can choose its integration type, and I've chosen Lambda function. And then I literally just choose the Lambda, and that will connect it super conveniently. And that's what I did for get and for post. So in the get method, we've got the client, which sends a request, an integration request to our Lambda, and you can see the Lambda's name at the end, message table backend. Uh, and because you may have noticed from my Lambda, everything requires there to be an event object. I can't really send get requests without fiddling with um, query parameters. So what I've done for the get, which is going to be called in list because we want to get all of the items. Um, I've done a cheeky transformation inside the integration request. So if we go down to mapping templates, I've created a mapping template that says 
send operation list to the lambda. So this transforms our get request into kind of a, a JSON post here, so that when we uh, we can test our get actually, um, and we don't have to provide anything, and we test it, and we can see we get the list back. Super convenient. Uh, the post I've not messed around with at all. It'll literally, um, if we go back to our lambda and we get our create test message. Can't believe I'm not typing this out by hand. So if we stick in hello world from API gateway, gateway, we'll stick with that. Oh, for pronunciation's sake, we won't stick with that. So we test that, we get a status 200. Let's test our get again to see if it's been in there. Um, hello world from API gateway, it's been added. So we now know that our database works, our Lambda works, and our API connection to the Lambda works. This is brilliant. Now, I want to connect to this API from outside of AWS. So what do I have to do? I need to set up a method for authorization. I could leave it open, but that feels risky to me. So I chose the easiest technique, which was API keys. My first step was to create an API key, and I've created several, but the one we'll be using is called Postman. You'll never guess how we're accessing this API. So I've created an API key called Postman. Here's its value. Um, don't use that too much. And what you have to do is assign an API key to a usage plan. So what I did was um, I created a new usage plan, but you can add to existing usage plans. Um, and I've done that. And when you add an API key to a usage plan, you can choose which stage to add it to. Now stages are like deployments for your API. So you can have a production deployment or a production stage you can have alpha, beta, other ones for your convenience. You can do version numbers as well. So you can have API version 1, v1 being a stage. Uh, and these are applied in usage plans. So I've got my message table back in usage plan. As we can see, I've added the usage plan to the stages of alpha and default. And that means that the API keys that I've assigned to this usage plan will be valid inside these two stages. If you want to deploy your end, um, your endpoint to a stage, you go deploy API, choose the stage you're deploying to, and you can give it a description. Um, so from here, we've got our deployed um, endpoint. I've deployed it to alpha uh, behind the scenes. So now we're going to try and call it from Postman. Here we are. So uh, I didn't tell you about this. How do I find it out? Good. Awkward silence. Good job, Michael. Long story short, you can get the um, URL of your API somehow. And I found it out. And it's here. Here's the host name. Uh, here's the stage alpha. And here is the actual endpoint message table back end. So I told you before that I'd set get up. In authorization, we've got API key. We're providing X API key, and if we look in our API keys at Postman and the value of the API key, we can see that they line up. So I'm providing Postman's API key, uh, it lives in the headers, and when I do my get, we can see all of our messages. We can even see the newest one, hello world from API gateway. So the get works, and I can also test the post, um, same endpoint. And I'm providing a body here. Hello there from the post person. And if I click send, it's 200 OK. And if I test my get again, we can see hello from the post person has turned up. I have no idea why it's in the middle. I'm guessing it's sorted by the message field or by this. I'm not going to find out. But there you go. Uh, we now know that we can access our API from outside of AWS. All I need is an API key in the header, so I could now integrate this API into my application. I could be getting messages and storing messages from an Angular web app, communicating with the DynamoDB database, all just by using an API gateway and a Lambda. There you go, demo complete.